Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, welcome. My name's Tolu and on this channel I share content all around personal finance, budgeting, frugal living and I show you how to live your best life on a budget. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back to watch another video. So in today's video, what I'm going to be doing is bringing you episode number eight of my Instagram live series called Tea Money Talks. So if you're not familiar with the series and you haven't watched any of the other previous episodes, just to give you a quick overview, Tea Money Talks is a weekly Instagram live series where we have real open conversations about money. So we talk about everything from budgeting, getting out of debt, saving, investing, every money topic you can think of, we explore it weekly on the show. Show. Every week I'm joined by a special guest to talk about one money topic or another and this week I'm excited to present my guest for the week. I was joined by David, he's called the personal finance coach. He shares amazing content online all around personal finance and budgeting and ways to save money, ways to pay off your debt, ways to invest, things that you can be doing with your pension. He literally covers all aspects when it comes to personal finance and he really is very knowledgeable on the topic of money. So it was really great to get him on the show to really have a conversation about breaking that paycheck to paycheck cycles. So like I say on every episode, you're going to want to grab yourself a pen and a paper, grab yourself a hot drink and some snacks because it's a really good one and, and I'm sure you're going to get so much from it. So if you're into personal finance, you like content all around managing your money effectively, then give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you're yet to do so. And without further ado, I'm going to bring you episode number eight of Tea Money Talks. Afternoon, or shall I say good evening? Hey guys, and welcome to episode number eight of T Money Talks. I'm your host, Tolu, aka T Money, and on this weekly live series, what we do is we have real open conversations about money. So the strap line for this show is it's okay to talk about money, and I really think it is okay to talk about money. I know it's such a taboo subject, but I feel like by us having more of these conversations, we can really break these taboos down and really help each other start winning with our finances. So with that being said, guys, this is episode number eight, like I already said, and the conversation that we're going to be having today is all about how to break that paycheck to paycheck cycle. So I'm so excited to be announcing who my special guest is for this evening. I'm being joined by a man named David. He's also known as the personal finance coach. So I started following David's journey back in November last year, so just under a year ago now that I connected with him and his content is so amazing. So I connected with him on Instagram and he shares so much amazing content all around personal finance, all around budgeting, getting out of debt, pensions, investing, insurance, like every subject you can think of, he provides such invaluable information on this area. And I thought he would be a great person to get on to have this conversation about money with and about how to break that paycheck to paycheck cycle because he's able to save 44% of his income every single month and he has his own property. So he obviously knows something that a lot of us need to know about. So I'm really excited to have David join me on this live. So without further ado, I'm going to get him onto the live right now. And we have action. Hey. Hey, David. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Well, re well refreshed and relaxed after your holiday. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for such a lovely intro as well. That was, uh, yeah, so so nice of you. I can't believe it's been, yeah, a, nearly a year since we, we sort of first connected. It, it's crazy. crazy. It's been a crazy year, but you've had an amazing year so far. Your content is phenomenal. Like, I've thank you. From it. So no, thank you. You're doing a fantastic job. But I've obviously done a little bit of a pre-introduction, but in your own words, tell the guys a little bit about yourself before we get into it. Yeah, so, so hi guys. Yeah, I, I'm David. I'm uh, at the PF Coach on Instagram. Um, yeah, I'm just turned 27 last month. Uh, as Tolly says, I'm a, I'm a property owner uh, with my partner uh, and I just started my Instagram journey, started uh, sort of doing Instagram blogging uh, about November last year. And since then, it's just been great to, to talk and to, to get to know people like Tolly uh, and, and talk to so many other, other great, you know, Instagram uh, people and just everyone else who's, who's following along and asking questions so yeah that's sort of a bit about me but I'm sure we'll get into more of it as we, as we go through exactly. and discuss all the questions. Well, so I don't know if you've listened to any of the shows but what I like to do at the beginning is do a little bit of an icebreaker so yeah. I'm basically going to ask you a few questions so they're would you rather questions I give you two options and you just basically have to say which of the two options you'll do so you guys that have joined in on a live you can play along at home too so all you have to do is basically pick A or B for each question so there's going to be five questions in total Brilliant. so the first question give me a second i've scrolled way past it okay would you rather be a self-made millionaire 
So you've done all the work and you've made yourself a self-made millionaire. Or yeah. would, you, would you rather just marry a billionaire? Oh, I, I, I'm going to say self-made. Yeah? That's the question, yeah. Yeah. You see, I was torn between the two. I was like, self-made? Mm, but I was like, no. A part of me wants to say I would prefer to be self-made, but I know if, in reality, I would probably want to just marry a billionaire and not have to do the work. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah it's that, always, yeah. The reality yeah. is that it's always different, isn't it, sometimes? Exactly. Okay, so the second one, would you rather lose all of your money or lose all of your pictures and videos? So ever. <sighs> That's a tough one. It I, is, isn't it? <laughs> I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say the pictures thing. And I know for a lot of people it'd be different. I'm, I must admit, I am so bad, and I don't know probably if there's people like this, I'm so bad at taking pictures, but then I'm also really bad at actually sorting them out. I'm sure I've got loads everywhere, but I never sort them and look at them. So I, I, I don't know if I've missed anything, but maybe when I you know, look back in maybe 20, 30 years time, I'll feel a, a bit differently after a lifetime of <laughs> that sort of thing, yeah. Okay, so you definitely, so you go with B, you'd rather lose all your pictures. I think, yeah. no, yeah, you'd rather lose, I think I'd rather lose, I don't know you, I think maybe A. Yeah, yeah. that's, I, I that's fair. I think, I think a lot of people would pick A. I think that's probably the more natural thing to pick. Yeah, I'll tell you a quick story. I actually had a hard drive which had like all my pictures and my videos and stuff of my kids from when they were younger. And I broke the hard drive. I dropped it and oh, everything no. was gone. So there's these websites that you can go on and they can fix the hard drive for you. I paid like almost a grand to get it fixed. They didn't fix it. So I lost the grand and I lost all my pictures. <laughs> wow, you worst of both worlds there. You did, did yeah. actually both. <laughs> no, I didn't That's get my money though. and I lost my pictures. Got it. Yeah. Got it. All right. So the next one, would you rather see into the future or change the past? Ooh. Oh, that's a, that's a tough one. I'm going to go with I'd rather see into the future. See, really? Yeah, I think I'll go with B too, yeah. No, the A will see into the future, so I'd rather go with A. I think I'll go with A too, yeah. See into the future rather than yeah. change. Because the past has happened, it's gone. Yeah, it'll be good to get a glimpse into what the future holds. So yeah, that would be my option too. Okay, would you rather have £5,000 every day for the rest of your life or would you rather I just give you a million pounds up front? Uh, I'm... £5,000 every day? For the rest of your life, I'm going to take the five thousand. I think that's worth more over the long term. I, I, I'd rather have that. Potential. I don't think either is a bad option, but I think I'm going to go for one. I'm going to go for the five thousand constant. Yeah. Yeah. I think I might. I'll go with B. And the reason why I'll go with B is because you might change your mind. You promised me a, a five thousand every day, then you might stop giving it to me after the first week. So very true. And you can do a lot with a million. You, you invest it right, you'll be you'll be doing exactly. just as well. So I, I I definitely don't think there's a, there's a bad answer there. But yeah, you're probably not not a bad shout with a million actually. <laughs> All right, and the last one: so Would you rather be poor? So you're poor, you're broke, you don't have money, but everyone else around you thinks you're rich. So you're you're able to like fake your richness or yeah. would you rather be filthy rich but everyone around you just thinks you're broke filthy rich and have everyone think i'm broke yeah <laughs> we yeah. agree on one there <laughs> definitely yeah that one didn't even take much thought. it's just like yeah that i'd rather be yeah yeah Let definitely me. and i've got money that way i don't have to give you any so yeah <laughs> <Makes> yeah <sense>. <laughs> all right brilliant thanks for being a good team player thanks for playing that game with me so we're gonna get into the real heart of this conversation what we're going to be talking about so the topic obviously for this conversation for those that are new on it in fact i need to add it on the screen i need to pin it let's see if it works because last time i tried to pin it it didn't work hold on uh, it's always temperamental isn't it sometimes yeah. with this sort of... oh see it's not working again i posted it now how do i make it stay oh wait hold on yeah, you see, I don't know how to do it. It's going to disappear, isn't it? Never mind. <laughs> it you can press it. Yeah, you and then it should like hold on it. it. And then it should, it should give you the option, but I'm holding on it and nothing's happening. Try just pressing it. Just press it once. Yeah, see if that oh, works. There. there you go. You found it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Gosh, not tech savvy at all. Okay, so brilliant. So the conversation that we're going to be having, obviously, is how to stop living paycheck to paycheck. And yeah. Yeah, thank you, Finance D, it worked, yay. And the first um, question that I had, or the first thing I wanted us to basically clarify for the sake and the purpose of anyone that doesn't know is what does it actually mean to live paycheck, paycheck to paycheck? So 
So I would define living paycheck to paycheck as being unable to cope if you lost your income this month. So you, 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 you get into the month and you've got nothing left, essentially. So you, you're relying on that paycheck next month to be able to then pay your bills and then the following repeat, rinse and repeat sort of thing. So that's typically what I define as living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. Pretty similar, yeah, exactly. That's what I would say as well. I think it's just not having any kind of emergency fund or any kind of safety net. So it's like, how many paychecks away are you from financial ruin kind of thing? So if it's a case yeah. of at the end of the month, you spent all your money, there's nothing left for the following month. And that's the whole paycheck to paycheck cycle. So every single month, you're waiting for that next paycheck to come through so that you can pay all your bills and then the cycle continues. So yeah, that, yeah. we're on the same page. That's good. <laughs> that's a good start. Yeah. That's a good start. We're off to a good start. Okay, brilliant. And in your opinion, oh, actually, sorry, to go back, actually, in, you, in your own experience or your, your um, story growing up, have you ever yeah. been in that position of living paycheck to paycheck? I know I mentioned at the beginning about you being able to obviously save so much of your yeah. income now. I'm going to be honest, I don't think I have. Um, okay. Certainly um, not that I can remember. I've, I've always been reasonably good with money i've always had sort of a fund to fall back on i'd say that 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 means that you know if i was to lose my job i'd, I'd be okay but there's certainly um i think probably the, the closest i come to that would be you know university and when i was you know living on i lived on student loans um and that was very much you know you it's it's sort of wreck and ruin in a set you know uh, sort of riches and ruins so you, you you start off the term with what you're your, three thousand well, it's not like that it's yeah. what grand or whatever it is um and you slowly deplete that in a sense and you know i know there's was friends and others and i was lucky enough not to but you know if you don't get that student loan in the next term you're in that you're in a position where you're, you're going to be struggling and, yeah exactly so it, or if you spend it all too quickly it's it's so i, I think the closest story would be, would be during my student day certainly where yeah if it, if you didn't just student loan didn't come in then i was having problems because that was mainly source of income i didn't know yeah. i didn't really I, didn't, I had a couple of part-time jobs, but not. Um, yeah, certainly that was a big sustainable su sustenance for me. Oh, wow. So you've always been financially responsible then, you'd say. So is that from... I, I really don't know whether financially responsible is the right term. I don't know. <laughs> 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 There's always times when you, you don't perhaps aren't as responsible with your money as you, as you should be. But certainly, yeah, I've always been in a lucky enough position that um, either because uh, living with, with a partner or, or, or whatever, but, you know, I've always had enough money that... I'm, I'd, be, I'd be comfortable for at least a, a couple of months probably before I you know was really struggling oh that's amazing and is that from childhood that's how you've always been would you say your parents taught you that or I'd say it was I it was been just curious always about managing money well yeah it wasn't necessarily taught to me I'd say I'd say it was just one of the things again you, you talk about you know whether it's learned or whether you learn something through doing or seeing and I think a lot of it's probably seeing and just picking up on little bits and pieces here and there and I was very and again when I went to university I was very inquisitive in terms of you know reading and looking at people like so for instance you know Martin Lewis he's the big one but you just yes. learn I was sort of sort of started teaching myself about budgeting and, and learning and it, money had always been something I was curious about and it certainly and that's I think what what led to it and just led to me being uh handling it quite well okay that's really good to know that's interesting and so then in your opinion, then, obviously, from the outside looking in, I guess you yeah. could say, why do you think it is such the norm in general for people to live paycheck to paycheck? Why do you think it's so common in society? I think it's just because we live in such a... We live in a society that's driven by consumerism. You know, it, we, we talk about, you know, we, everything is trying to make us buy something. You know, typically, we're, we're marketed to so much nowadays that we don't even realize it and, and i'm I, I i'm exactly the same uh, you know we see adverts we see products we see services whether it's and it doesn't even you know we it used to be you just see it when you went outside or you turn on the tv but now with the, you know social media our phones etc everything is there to sell us something whether it, it might well be yeah it could, could be anything and we don't always recognize it and then even when you get when you're going shopping it's all about you could have this product or that product and it's about, you know, brands and then we're sold to about, you know, we're sold to from early age that brands are better, that, you know, it might, if it costs more, it must be a better product. If this <laughs> brand is spent more, you know, if we see the, this brand, it will be better because it's against the non-branded thing. We, we see all these things which just mean that we are taught to spend and then we wonder why no one saves because mm -hmm. to be honest, you know, no one wants us to save really. Even the banks want us to borrow money to spend money, you know? So, 
I think that's probably why the majority of people just, it's just the norm. It is, and, it, and again, that's the thing, because it is the norm. It's not sort of as a strange thing to, you know, yeah. if you get to the month and say, oh, I've got no money left. Everyone doesn't go, that's weird. They go, oh, me too, sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's just a dumb thing, isn't it? So I think that's probably why at the, at the end of the day. Yeah, no, definitely. I definitely agree with the points you make. I think also for me, it's probably not having a bigger goal or any kind of long-term view. So yeah. it's like, that was my experience anyway, why I ended up in so much debt and I was always living paycheck to paycheck. It's because I, I've got the money, I've got things that I want to buy, let me buy it. I wasn't really thinking yeah. of the picture. I didn't really have you, any that's, that's goal. fair. You work, you work half the money and, and you know, exactly. people think they for it and they, they deserve a treat or they deserve to, to go and spend exactly. it. And, you know, that's nothing wrong with that. I think you're, you're right though. <laughs> Having a goal makes it easier to distinguish between what's to be spent and what's to be saved. Exactly, 100%. I think, yeah, having clear financial goals make all the difference. It definitely was a game changer for us. And I think, yeah, you touched on all the points that I would have made in terms of why it's so much the norm. And I think the next question to me, to you, sorry, would be, um, why do you think it's so important to kind of break that cycle of living paycheck to paycheck? I mean, it, the, the most important thing is to, one is to try and either get out of debt or stay out of debt. I think it, it's so easy that mm. if we're living paycheck to paycheck, it only takes one small emergency for that whole system to just break down. And that's when the spirals start. So, you, you know, if, um, if COVID is, I mean, is the big example now, we'd never, no one saw it coming, but it doesn't even have to take something as big as a global pandemic. It could be simply yeah. that, you know, your car won't start one morning and you need to get the, you know, the battery replaced or you suddenly have two blown tires in your car. So, you know, it could be a two, three hundred pounds that you just, you don't have to spare to spend and you then have to borrow the money and, you know, yeah. you borrow it quickly. You could even be looking at payday lenders or something and suddenly you're having to then next month, you instead of now you were fine living paycheck to paycheck because you've had enough money, but now suddenly there's another added expense that perhaps you don't take into account. And now you've got to borrow to be able to repay back the loan you took out to see the emergency. And that's when the spiral starts, when we start borrowing to pay back borrowing. And then you don't, and you, if you don't realise that and don't start cutting back to be able to repay it, then you just get into this spiral. And by, yeah, you just keep spiraling. So it's really important to have that, it, 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 it's important to have that emergency fund to then stop yourself having to worry about living paycheck to paycheck. And ha having getting that mindset of, you know, while I have all this money, some of it I need to save for myself in the future and be able to spend on myself later down the line on things that, you know, we don't want to spend money on, but it stops us having get, getting to death. Yeah, no, I think you definitely hit the nail on the head there. I saw someone just commented, what did that, that comment said, um, people also love to compare themselves to other people on social media, which is definitely a valid point. I think that, I think that was just the question with the question I asked before, and it's so true. A lot of us do struggle with that as much as I can say I'm not yeah. influenced by what's happening on social media and what other people are doing. I'm human, and it does ha it does have an impact. It does have an effect on you. Oh, oh definitely. I, I'm, I'm I say I, I'm not immune to to any of this, and I'm exactly the same. If, um, as, as, as other people, I, I can be marketed to, I, I am marketed to, I'm sure. The worst part is that sometimes you're marketed to, you don't even know it. So you can't yeah. stop it, you never know you've been marketed to. So yeah, 100% people love to compare themselves to others and it's, uh, yeah, it's one of the problems. No, yeah, but I think you really hit the nail on the head with how you explained the importance of breaking that paycheck to paycheck cycle. It's because it, it's fine when it's all working, like what you said, when all yeah. the, all the, all the um, yeah, when it's all lining up and the cars are aligning and you're able to pay all those bills. But all there's one thing to go wrong and then it's a big mess so if i take myself for example my own situation if somebody had told me at the beginning of this year that i was going to be made redundant i would be like um, that's not happening why would i get made redundant i'm part of the furniture that's what i thought but fast forward to june this year and they gave me the chop <laughs> my yeah. tenure of service didn't mean anything when they needed to cut back on heads and save the business so it just goes to show that you don't know what could be around the corner so whilst um uh, this time last year I thought everything was fine I've got my job I'm secure it's a very secure job I've been there for 10 years but you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring and it's important to kind of plan ahead for these unexpected things not to say that you're going to lose your job tomorrow guys no, to it's 100% true though isn't it we, we, we don't know I mean this year is, is the year of we don't know what's around the corner but <laughs> it, it's why I always talk when people talk about um, and it's slightly different to page to page people talk about you know taking on debt or taking out debt to then invest or 
take out lots of mortgages to buy properties and to buy rentals and stuff. And I always say, that's fine when everything is going okay. Exactly. And when, you know, we all have a plan on paper. Paper is brilliant. You know, you have us Excel spreadsheets. I know, you know, I love an Excel spreadsheet, but at some point, it, something's going to happen. It won't, if you, you know, if you're borrowing to pay buy rental properties, a renter may not pay and suddenly you can't pay the mortgage. Back. And that's when, when things go wrong, they go wrong very quickly. And very quickly, Matrix, Matrix yeah. is, is, is the example of that is, you know, having that, um, security of not having to worry that if you lose your job that you can fall back for a couple of months or you can cut the ex you know you can cut your expenses really easily or you've got yeah. that buffer to, to work with is yeah is, is it helps me sleep at night I think definitely oh, 100%. Sure it, definitely. it makes such a big difference because even when I again looking back at my situation yeah. if this redundancy had come two years ago I think I'll be homeless right now that's how big it would have been because we were at that at that time we were living paycheck to paycheck yeah. more than to paycheck, even below paycheck to paycheck because we were every month we were getting ourselves further into debt so we were yeah. living beyond our means and as fast forward now we or, or should i say last year we had already made the steps towards um surviving on one income so yeah. when the redundancy came we were used to being a one income anyway so all it meant is that we didn't have as much extra money but at least it wasn't like as critical as it could have been if we were doing a paycheck to paycheck. So even now that we're on one income, we still found ways to reduce our expenses further so that we're still not spending all of that one income. And I think, yeah, yeah. It makes, it makes that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, I know. It is tight, but Aldi's my best friend. <laughs> exactly. But that's the thing, isn't it? We, we, you know, when you get happy situations, you know it's probably going to be tight, but it, it's better to be tight, isn't it, than, um, like you say, that you potentially end up, end up homeless. You know, and, that's, and that is the... The thing, I think they all say, you know, we're all, we're all two emergencies from being homeless. And I think it, it, it's certainly, if you know, if you're living patient to patient, that's never more, more true. It's just, it's, it, it's, yeah, it, it's certainly something that even just cutting back a little bit, just gives you got a little bit more breathing room in case of yeah. something goes wrong. It's so, so, so important. So crucial, 100%. So with all of that being said, scrolling down to my next question so that I don't ask the wrong one. Okay, yeah, that was it. So we've obviously spoken about what, living paycheck to paycheck is and the importance of not doing it and why it's so important to kind of, you know, not try and break that cycle. Yeah. How can people do it? Like what steps can people actually take in order to break that paycheck to paycheck cycle in your opinion? Yeah. And I think this is, it's really easy to say, stop living paycheck to paycheck. And I think <laughs> everyone probably understands to a point, you know, they, you know, everyone would love to have more money and save more money. I think it's really easy to say, but like you say, it's, it's about, breaking it down into actual yeah. practical steps. So I think step one for me is always, I think whenever you're doing these things, it's just to write down what you're currently spending. What, what is your, you know, create a budget, but just write down what are your outgoing expenses. Um, the way I, I break this down and I, I, I say to people to do it is, um, is to take into account your, your main four expenses first, which are making sure you can pay for food because you need food to eat, food and medicine, you know, anything you need there. Uh, making sure you can pay for uh, lights, or gas, water, making sure you can heat and light your home, making sure that you can pay your rent or mortgage, and then making sure you can get to and from work. Those are the four main expenses that everyone needs to, to have at the top of their budget because those are the four things that, at the end of the day, are going to mean that you can keep going tomorrow. If you, yes. if you stop paying one of those, life becomes a lot harder very quickly. So if you can keep, even if those are the only four things you can budget for or can pay for, look to pay for them first. Yeah. Um, the next thing I say when looking at budget is look at those, um, look at your debts, look at what, you, what, what are your minimum payments, what, what do you have to make on, on those and write those down so you know what the minimum payments are um, through those. Um, and again, if you, if you do get in trouble, that's when you talk to creditors, but certainly if you, as part of your paycheck, you should be looking at what your minimum payments are for, um, for, your, for your debts. Uh, next look at what you're and then you then you can get onto sort of the more fun aspects but look at what you're spending in terms of discretionary spending and contractual spending is how i describe the two categories so contractual spending is what are you spending on spotify netflix your gym membership things that have a set amount coming out of your account each month that you know are going to stay the same so things like yeah, yeah netflix your spotify your gym membership those sort of your amazon prime those sort of things that perhaps come out of your account once a month you know they're going to come out make sure you're budgeting for those next so you've got the money to cover those things and then finally, yeah, uh, I touched on discretionary spending, making sure that you can afford to pay for, you know, things like going out for the day, uh, mm -hmm. coffees, takeaways, those things that perhaps, you, you know, you want to spend but could have fluctuate each each month. So 
the first things first, when you get looking to get out patient patient is to, to write those down in a list and then top up the number. That's and that at the end of the day is the number you need to bring in each month to be able to then live paycheck to paycheck as a starting point. I think is 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 the, the best place to start. Um, and then it is just about working out about looking to either cut back if you're living close to or beyond your means. But more importantly, if you're living below your means now, that's you know, that's great. Start to save that each month and start to put aside, uh, you know, I say either a, a small amount, or as much as you can, really, the quicker you, you can get your paycheck. But basically what we want to do is we want to save our paycheck so that we have at the end of the month, instead of having waiting for our paycheck to come in and we're on zero, we're already at our paycheck. So we save that money. So if your paycheck's a thousand pound, save a hundred pound each month. Then we've got a paycheck spare in a separate account. We know that we, if for some reason we're not paid this month, we've got another pay. We've got a paycheck we can draw on, and then we can replenish later. So that, that's what I mean by, you know, saving that money. Um, and it's something you can do, whether you, you know, no matter your income, is making sure you've got that um, set aside so that you, you're ready for, uh, yeah, if you're if you're not paid for a month, or probably your life exactly <laughs> ready for life. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So those are, yeah, definitely. Sorry. Go on. No, no, no. Go on. So, so in terms of breaking the paycheck to paycheck cycle, you'd say focus on creating a budget, finding ways to reduce your expenses, writing it all down, knowing exactly how much it is for to be you, basically what it costs yeah, for you to yeah. live your life and find ways to bring that down. I mean, the only thing that I would add is a step before that is the whole looking at your money mindset. So for me, I think that was the first thing that we needed to do on our journey was really change our attitude and our mindsets towards money and our finances. So things like the keeping up with the Joneses, I think was one of the things that really yeah. affected us. And that's what got us into a lot of trouble in terms of getting in debt in the first place. So when we... Yeah, 100%, 100%, I think, I think, yeah you're, you're so right. And I think I, I clumped that in with almost writing... Because if you, if, I think a lot of times you're doing page to page, sometimes you can the first time you do this is when you write the budget and you look at it for the first time, you look at this, what you spend money on for, for the last month. You go, I didn't realize I spent money on so many yeah. things or so much. I think that, that is exactly that, isn't it? You, you look back and go, well, hang on a sec, why did I spend that much money on whatever it may be? Yeah. It's like, and it, nine times out of 10, it's probably to keep up with the Joneses. I think that's yeah. what we, we all do is we, we do things because we think they're normal or because the other people do it. So therefore it's okay. And you suddenly yeah. look back and go, if someone had given me, I know, hundred pound. Would I spend this all on takeaways, all on coffees? Probably not. Probably but not. You do it. But you, exactly, you do it because you do it bit by bit over time. I remember yeah. when I did one one of the times when I was tracking my expenses one month. I realized I spent hundred pounds in McDonald's in one month. Hundred pounds in McDonald's. I was like, "There's no way I did that." But when I was going back looking at the numbers, yeah. I had to go over it again, and I had spent hundred pounds in one month in McDonald's, and that wasn't yeah. one trip. In McDonald's. That was trips, <laughs> many trips. Yeah. That month. I, I, it's exactly that, isn't it? I think uh, and it, it, someone's just mentioned, uh, Mitch has mentioned eating out was, yeah, eating out is, is the biggest, I think, is always the one that we yeah. always overestimate or, you know, underestimate on paper and then over. Yeah, you know, I spend a lot of pounds on for food or takeouts. No, you don't. Yeah. spend a lot more on that. Yeah, it, it, it's that. We look at it and go, I, I always think, you know, I always end up spending, some, sometimes you've got to be careful because you end up spending more on takeaways than you do on your actual food shopping. Stuff. Exactly. Yeah, that was me for many, many years, yeah. spending so much money on eating out and not, yeah, not as much on my food budget, actually. Actually, no, that's a lie. I was spending a lot on both. A lot food on both. was our biggest expense. We spent so much on food. It was crazy. And the amount of food I wasted as well, it was crazy. Mm. Because you used to throw things away all the time because it will go off and it's like you have to buy more food. So, yeah, no, yeah. having a budget definitely makes a big difference and saves you a lot of money. And I think, yeah, like I was saying, the whole money mindset thing definitely made a big difference for me. So it's like, yes, you want to break that paycheck to paycheck cycle. And yes, these are practical steps that you need to take. But unless you're actually willing to commit to the process, then it's not going to work because it's not going to be an easy thing. If you're used to a certain way of living, a certain standard of living yeah. and a certain lifestyle, to now have to cut back on that lifestyle when you have the money there is a hard thing to do. Say no to yourself. It's very difficult. A hundred percent. What I add to that is don't be hard on yourself and don't expect to complete it within one month. This isn't a this isn't this isn't a one month thing and you're done. This isn't no even problem. a two month or a three month thing and you're done. This is something that you have to continually work on and re reassess and readdress every month, every few months. To, to make sure that you're on track because it's so easy to to just 
go off track or, or, or wander off the path, especially if, you know, deep in... Yeah, same here. Many times, yeah. You look back over the two, three months, you go, well, hang on a second, where has my money gone? And you realise that when you add it back up, that it's gone to places you hadn't budgeted for, you didn't realise you were spending on. So it, it's something that everyone, I think, has to do. We, also, we can be, you know, I think people say they're good with money or bad with money, but I don't think that's necessarily... The, the the case i don't think people are more or less adept it's just a case of having the tools in your in your arsenal to know that you have to look and keep track some people may be more prone to you know spending maybe more spendable time you know uh, but again i think these are all things that we can work on no one is born good with money or bad with money it's something that we just have to to work yeah. on and be um, conscious of yeah 100 percent. it's a it's like you've said you hit the nail on the head it's a continual thing it's not a yeah. You do it today and you're perfect at it and that's it. Or you do it for two, three months and yeah, that's it. I'm bang on the money with budget. Because what you'll find is the moment you think that you, you've got it all together is the moment you just let all the habits creep back in. So yeah. yeah, it's definitely a continual thing, continual process. In terms of budgeting, what method, is there a particular method of budgeting that you recommend or that you prefer using? Yes, yeah, so well, I'm, I'm a massive advocate for zero-based budget. For me, it's, yeah, it's, it's the way, so those that, that you know, that aren't, I don't know, aren't aware, it's basically where you put your income at the top of the page and then you just uh, add up all your expenses beneath and you should end up with hopefully zero pounds left at the bottom. But it's all spent for, it's all accounted for at the beginning of the month when you write your budget. So um, you know where your, every penny of your money is going, whether that could well be you're spending on savings, for instance. You know, you're going to put £200 away in savings, but that goes in your budget as a line item you know what you're spending on um so you don't you not end up you don't end up with the odd amounts left at the end of the month or you went if you only have two pound fifty with three days of the, the month to go you know that's not a problem because you haven't got any bills you coming out yeah. you've got nothing else to plan for it and that's absolutely fine so those are the things that zero based budgeting for me is, is always been the way it just helps me keep track of what i'm spending and where i'm spending it 100 percent. yeah i don't know how i didn't know about the zero based budgeting on a co- until a couple of years ago but it was a game changer for us so i definitely recommend it to you guys in fact i have a zero based budget and template in my bio so if anyone wants it you can download it for free from my bio shameless plug there but yeah, <laughs> yeah. whatever helps go, go check it out yeah exactly no it definitely makes a big difference and yeah no that goes so those are the steps that you'd recommend hold on one second just check it oh we've got a couple of questions okay so we got a question and it said um just getting divorced tiny income and toddler no debt but renting help wow that Excellent. is not an easy situation to be in the the first thing i think i'd say in a situation like that and as someone who doesn't have a child and isn't married you know i'm not talking from experience here but the, the first thing i think in those situations is always make sure that you are getting the the benefits that you're entitled to and you're in you and you, you're getting all the money that that is available especially when things are tight um make sure that there you, you, you there's there's so many uh, excellent websites out there that will do the calculations for you but just make sure that you are um yeah that, that you're, you're you get everything you're entitled to and that you get all those benefits because they're, they're there to, to help you um, yeah. Um, so I've seen there's a few questions that I've skipped. Hold on. No, go for it. Um, there's a at home, said so every African mom. That's funny. <laughs> so, platform, LOL, say no to rice. Okay, I think I saw a question. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention to all the comments. Oh, there we go. Do you still make an allowance for miscellaneous in the zero-based budget? Yes, I do in my zero-based budget. What about you? Yeah, I, I, I do as well. So the, I, the way I do my zero-based budget is I, I budget for everything I know I'm going to be spending money on likely in the month, so takeaways or, uh, you know, uh, transport, that sort of thing. But then I also... Um, make sure i give myself what i call my discretionary spends yeah. so therefore i give myself a set amount each month where i can spend it on whatever i want it doesn't have to be accounted for it could be extras in terms of going out it could be uh yeah any, anything essentially it's mine to spend as i please and it doesn't have to be budgeted for and it, it's just budgeted for in can your see my uh, face can you I see can. my face I can. I can. is it just you better you into Can everyone see me, guys? If you can see me, thumbs up if you can see me. Can you see my thumb up? <laughs> I hope you guys can see me. 
Um, Mish, Mish Sib said, also using price comparison sites for things like utility bills and phone bills is very helpful. Standard tariffs are not your friend. Oh, tell me no, about it. Definitely. And if, again, if it's the first time you've gone through your budget, perhaps, again, great place to say to begin with is to look at those fixed bills that are, you know, your, your rent, your mortgage, your, your phone bill, your, your electricity costs, your TV uh, cable bill, all of those things are things where you can hopefully you can cut them down without necessarily um, without necessarily uh, uh, diminishing the quality of the product you're getting, and you you know you don't have to therefore uh, you know you don't want to spend more on your electricity bill than you have to. Yeah, exactly. No, hundred um, percent. Websites like uh, Money Saving Experts and stuff they're really good at price comparisons and things yeah. like that. Yeah, definitely. And I think finding ways to reduce your expenses in the variable expenses categories is very good as well. So food was a big one for us. I was able to say, oh, now you can't see my face. And that's I so weird. I don't know, because I, I, I can see my face clearly. <laughs> you haven't you haven't moved out. You hear me, guys. Pardon? Yeah, you haven't moved at all. Like, yeah, you're, just, you're, just, you're still good. It's the same for there me. Maybe, guys, internet connection. Yeah, because no, I think... No, no. On my side, hopefully. Anyway, we'll see on the playback. <laughs> my head's chopped off throughout the whole thing. <laughs> but, um, you know, I was just saying in terms of ways to um, obviously bring down the expenses. So someone mentioned in the comments, obviously, about the utility bills and finding ways to reduce that and doing price comparisons. And I think food for us was a big saver for us as well. That was how we were able to save a lot of money, switching from Tesco online food shop to shopping at Audi in the market. Yes, it's a bit more inconvenient, but I was able to reduce my food budget by £100 just by doing that. So yeah. I think ways that you can just find to cut back on your expenses, obviously things like subscriptions as well. Maybe not all the subscriptions that you have you necessarily need. Maybe review them. Some of them you might be able to just cut altogether. Or, yeah, find a workaround. So like things like Netflix, for example. I always use my sister's one <laughs> when money's comes. Yeah. I just use her one. So I don't have my own Netflix subscription. So, yeah things that you can do to find ways to reduce your expenses so that you can, like you were saying before, find ways yeah. to put money in saving and, yeah, building that emergency fund and saving towards your future. So now 100%. Okay, in terms of books and podcasts, so obviously you're very knowledgeable in the area of personal finance and I'm guessing a lot of that knowledge was acquired through reading or studying. So what kind of materials would you recommend to anybody wanting to get on their own financial yeah. journey and break so that cycle? Yeah, there, there, there's a few different different places. I'm, I must admit, I'm, 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 he's not everyone's cup of tea, but I'm a big Dave Ramsey fan. Uh, I, 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 yeah, you're saying brilliant. Uh, I know he can he can definitely split opinions, certainly in the UK. Uh, he, yeah. But um, I think he's he's great. You know, you, you don't have to f subscribe necessarily to all his philosophies, but I think in terms of certainly the the getting out of debt portion is just and, and learning how to budget and just having you know learning and here I, again not even necessarily about listening to today but listening to the call is what the other people he has loads of videos on his youtube channel about people who've got out of debt and just take inspiration from what they've managed to do and how they've done it i think is is, is a really good thing and again a lot of people have broken from living paycheck to paycheck to actually um now you know being debt completely debt free so listen to to, to those uh sorts of people i i then uh some of the other uh some of the other the books i've read there's there's loads there's um uh, money by uh laura waitley i think it is who uh was a, a times columnist uh times uh that's really good it's a really interesting book um there's a few other ones i've got uh I've, must be on my, my website you know, plug i've got a whole list of books that, that i've read on um uh, these very on various topics so so feel free to go check that out but um uh yeah they, that, there are there are there are so many resources out there. i think what i would say is just just start reading that's the the best place you can you can do is just have a look, do a search. If you are struggling uh, to find a correct resource or you don't know the resource, reach out to, to anyone on Instagram and they'll be direct you to someone that they know or like or, or that they um, that works for them. 100%. No, there's so, so many, so many books that you can read. Dave Ramsey, like you said, he's brilliant. Total Money, make, total money Makeover. That's his yeah. book I read and that's what actually helped us and catapulted us on our own debt-free journey. It was when we read Total Money Makeover that we started taking steps towards paying off our debt. So yeah, they ran amazing. Uh, the the yeah. other one I'd say, the other book I read that I really enjoyed was The uh, the Millionaire Next Door. It's quite an amazing. old book. I read book. that this year. Fantastic. Yeah. It's, it, it's an older book. It's an old book. I think it was written in the 90s, but it still rings 
really true today. Like the, the, the lessons that are there are, are, are lessons that we can all, all take away. I think it just shows basically for those that read it, it's just about, you know, what do millionaires spend their money on? How do millionaires become millionaires? And it's it's a great, you know, hopefully it's really inspiring as well. It's but, definitely an eye opener. Yeah. So that's another one I think really good for, for getting off, off the, for, you know, working out how to stop living paycheck to paycheck because that's, um, yeah, cool. it, it shows you how millionaires uh, spend their yeah. money. Oh, look, Kimberly agrees too. Yeah, I think another good book, just to not inundate you guys with so many different options, is <laughs> Your Money or Your Life. I love that book. I don't know if you've read that book. Your Money or Your Life <laughs> by Your Money or Your Life by Vicky Robin. Absolutely amazing book. And that's more all around money mindset and just your relationship with money and just deciding what's more important to you, your money or your life. Because a lot of the times we think that we say our life is more important, but the way we live our lives is actually money that ends up being more important it's a really good book anyway guys check it out it's really really good um oh we've missed a few questions so i'm just going to scroll back a little bit uh hi guys thanks for all join, joining by the way um miss miss sib said also pay yourself first take that as a seriously take that as seriously as a contractual obligation 100 percent. so the book the richest man in babylon talks about that always paying yourself first and it's such an amazing principle one that i'm still trying to incorporate into my finances because it's it's not easy when you haven't been doing it from the get-go to now switch to that way of um dividing your money so focusing and prioritizing yourself before any other bills before you pay for anything you pay yourself first a 10 percent. yeah that's that's difficult but it's so good if you can get into that discipline are you gonna say something uh, i i i'm gonna be a little bit controversial perhaps is i struggle with the concept just generally of paying yourself first. And I think it's really, the concept itself is good, but yeah. I always think, make, you know, I always think still, it, pay your bills first is, is, <laughs> is the ultimate. It's, it's, and, and I always think, you know, we can all talk about, we'd love to pay ourselves X amount, but until you've gone through your zero-based budget and, and, and actually made sure that you've got the money there to be able to pay yourself, we can't do it. So always make sure that you, you know, you pay those essential <laughs> bills. <laughs> you can't say that to your mortgage broker. Like I'm paying myself first, so I can't pay my mortgage this month. Yeah, it's like, no. I've got a bigger priority in it myself. But no, make sure. Uh, and again, if you look at just, just doing a budget means that you, you're going to have that money spare. Once you've done that for the first, you can have that money to pay yourself. But maybe it should be a case of, yeah, pay yourself first before you go spend on yourself. Because that, yeah. that, that is, I think, the way it is. Um, because we can all, I'd, I'd love to have 100%, say, you know, give myself 100% of my, my income. <laughs> it's going to mean I'm not going to have any to pay my bills. So, yeah, I get the concept. I'm being pedantic about it. But that's that's yeah. always, uh, always uh, no, I, I, it's something yeah. that I would love to be able to do. But right now, it's not feasible. But, yeah, it's definitely something I'd love to work towards, being able to pay myself that 10%. Because, like you said, we have life to pay for. So, as much as yeah. we would love to just take 10%, that 10% might mean, I don't have money to feed my kids this month. So, yeah. Exactly, yeah. I think that's you should work towards if you can. Um, love Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey says, live on beans on rice if you have to. Yeah. You can be ex extreme with his views, but I get his sentiment too. Yeah, 100%. So, so with that, the beans on rice, oh, bless. Yeah, no, there is nothing wrong with that, to be honest, if, if, if you can commit to it. But, I, yeah, I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> No, nothing wrong with that at all just remember him for that yeah really good book okay da, 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 sorry very he's a character yeah okay we've got some dave ramsey fans in there that's in all right then. okay <laughs> creating passive income was key for me personally yeah what what do you think about that and um, creating passive income i think yeah i mean if you, if you can yeah it's for it like yeah I, any income you can create is is going to be you know amazing. If you can create, I mean, the ultimate goal. If you can create a passive income that replaces your uh, and your, your normal income that you get from a job, then well, well done. Is, is what yeah. I say to that. You know, that, that's that's the goal for for everyone in a sense. Is if you have that ability to not even have to worry that you you know whether however the passive income is created, if you've got that coming in, then amazing. Yeah. 100%, yeah, no, definitely, where you can, and even if you can't, because I think it's quite a um, buzzword at the moment, isn't it, the whole passive income and all of the side hustles and all of that, but I think if there's ways that you can make extra money, so little things that like even selling things around the house that you don't use, unwanted items that, yeah, that are just there, yeah. buttering up your house, you can use that, you can sell those things and find extra money to then put towards maybe your emergency fund or paying off debt and things like that, definitely. Yeah, definitely, I, I, I mean, I, I did a post yesterday about this in that, I, I've, for those that don't know, I'm on a bit of a mission this year, 
strange as it may seem to try and make an extra five thousand pound this year don't know if I'm going to hit that, but it's, a, it's either big enough to go on marketing at the time. But so I've started sort of, started. The, it's been just over a month now. And the, it's amazing just the little ways that we can make mm. money without even really thinking about it. There's just so many different ways. And okay, none of these are going to be perhaps sustained money makers for me, but it, they're great ways if you're looking to make your first thousand pound emergency yeah, fund. Exactly. I've, I've grouped a whole load of stuff together in my flat that I don't need, haven't used for ages, just been sat around. Just especially electronic, you know, I've got mm. loads of old video games, consoles, phones that don't mean anything to me, but actually I've been selling them. And I mean, so far, I think I've made nearly £300 from a few things. Oh, wow. I'm probably going to make, hopefully, the plan is to crack about £500 just from selling a load of old things. So that's halfway to your emergency fund, just from things lying around my flat that I didn't need, didn't want, but were cluttering the place. And I've just kept because I, I yeah. just haven't heard of them. So I tell you to everyone, if you're struggling to find to cut ways to cut back, perhaps you're trying to make your, you know, build that emergency fund, just look for things that you haven't used in a while. It doesn't even have to be fancy. It could be the extra 10, 20 quid here or there. Mm. That people will buy. Just search things like Facebook Marketplace, eBay, Gumtree, all those different sites. You've been made what people buy. So, yeah. yeah. 100%. 100%. You'd be so surprised. Your trash is another person's treasure. So you might think, exactly. oh, this is rubbish. But no, <laughs> someone's willing to pay for some of that crap that you've got in your house. Definitely. So I know that earlier, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's something that I was doing a lot of, selling things from around the house. So all the kids' old clothes. I even sold a bed. Like just selling random bits. That yeah. Makes so much money. Yeah, especially if you have children and you've got children that have outgrown things. And even if yeah. you're not selling them, perhaps you're, you're trading or, or, or trading, you know, if you've got kids or got... Um, yeah friends you've got kids who are, you're growing your kids are growing up together or different ages trading clothes and doing that yeah. sort of thing again it's great yeah. ways to just get rid of stuff get stuff for free and, and doing it like that is yeah there are so many ways if we start to think about it and start to think yeah. i've got to make this money how do i do it yeah yeah you'll be so surprised when you start thinking creatively the ideas that come to you yeah 100 mm -hmm. percent totally agree with what you're saying there okay so moving on now to a little bit more oh before we move on actually sorry because i'm going to end up missing these questions so well, go for it we've got from Mwan Manzai, I probably just butchered that name, sorry, but it says, <laughs> would you put money in savings or on the stock market based on short ter short slash long-term returns? Uh, for, for me, I always talk about the sort of, uh, generally five years is, is the, the key time frame. So if you're looking to buy or save, if you're saving for something in the next five years, so house deposit, new car, um, holiday, always put it in easy access savings, you know, try and get the best rate you can. Typically it's going to be around 1% at the moment. Yeah. Just look, looking at, look at, look to get, get that. And so you've got it there accessible. And if you need it, emergency funds, always in easy access. Um, if you've not, if you don't need the money perhaps for four years, you may be able to tie it up in a, in a fixed term savings account. where you get a slightly high rate um, for yeah, longer terms, so anything over five years or anything for, you know, longer term pensions, retirement, that sort of thing um yeah put it in uh, feel free to uh, you know put it in investments have a look either look for yourself to, or talk to someone depending on how much you've got um and have a look and find out but the key when you're whenever you're investing is making sure you're investing in things you understand don't just take someone's word for it don't take yeah. my word for it don't take anyone on instagram's word for it don't take <laughs> your financial advisor's word for it if you don't understand something get them to explain it get someone to explain it and if you still understand don't invest yeah. it's better to not invest than to invest in something you don't understand and lose it all because in the day it's your money you're investing even if someone's doing it for you good advice that's fantastic advice definitely because you know you get so many people telling you about all these opportunities to make a quick buck and if you're not careful you fall for it and end up losing all your money so yeah, yeah definitely it's not it's not that money they're losing if it, if, if it all goes wrong it's yours so yeah be, be a bit cautious 100 percent. so we've got sinking funds have been helpful in living paycheck to paycheck also staying in your lane yeah definitely saying no to things that aren't just in my affordability bracket 100 percent means i totally agree with you and yeah, yeah that's how you've been able to avoid living paycheck to paycheck yeah it's def sinking funds were a game changer for me again i didn't even know what sinking funds were until i discovered mm -hmm. they brand i was like yeah i didn't know about them but once i found out about them it definitely helped me a lot so just in case you guys don't know what sinking funds are it's basically what savings when you save a pot of money for a particular goal or purpose so yeah. Yeah, you explain it in that way. Yeah, that's that's how yeah, I explain it. The, the yeah. yeah, that's exactly it. So 
Christmas, for example, is a perfect example of something you'd have a sinking fund for. So you'd say Christmas is coming December, same time every single year. So maybe it might be too late for this Christmas, but for next Christmas, you can start putting money aside towards your Christmas saving goal. So that come November next year, the money for Christmas is already there, as opposed to it comes November and you're like, oh my gosh, I need to pay for Christmas. And then you start putting things on a credit card and start yeah. spending money you don't necessarily have so yeah a sinking fund definitely helps you to plan for those expenses that you know are going to come rather than yep. making them seem like they're an emergency when they're not kind of thing uh, yeah 100 no i agree with that um oh, okay that's it we've got a couple of questions in the questions box okay yep. any basic tips for saving more for someone who lives with their parents for saving more if you live with your parents i mean if you if you live with your parents, you, you're probably going to have, I, I assume, I maybe wrongly, you're going to have lower expenses than someone who lives on their own or lives with uh, others. Um, so just take the opportunity, take, you know, people, living with parents is, is a tough one, but when you have the opportunity, if you have that, that if you, you are living, yeah, take the opportunity to just save as much as you can, because it's probably the one time in your life you're going to save, more, at least for a few years, you're going to be able to save more than ever. So take the time to really build up money, even if you don't know what you necessarily want to do with it, whether it's a house deposit, a car, whatever it is, just start building up that, that you know, a, a bit of a, a, a basket of money, a, a, just a bit of a, a side, side net of, of money. And then you can decide um, in six months, a year, when you look to move out, perhaps what you want to do with it. There's no, no rush. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. I'll echo that advice. Yeah, definitely. Save as much as you can. That is a perfect position to be in. I wish I could be at home with mom and dad now, saving all my money. Um, oh, what is your website? Uh, so it's, my website is www.thepersonalfinancecoach.co.uk. Um, if you click on my link, you'll find it there as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay, so just quickly then, we've only got, what, 10 more minutes, but just to talk a little bit time more. Flies. Yeah, no, time flies and you're having fun. Thanks, you've been a great guest. So no, it's been really good really talking to you. Um, I was just going to ask you more about what you do. Obviously, you're a personal finance coach. So just talk to the guys that don't know what a personal finance coach is what it is that you actually do as a personal finance coach and yeah. how you're able to help them. So there's, I think the, the really important distinction to make is between people, yeah, that are financial coaches help you with their money and then there's financial advisors and they're two different things. So financial coaches aren't regulated. They offer advice as we've discussed on mindset, on helping you with budgeting, with goals, with, with really um, getting to grips with the, with the basic building blocks of personal finance and being able to then mean that you can progress and move on uh, and start to, you know, do things like getting a mortgage, buying a house uh, for those that are starting off or maybe re investing in retirement. Financial advisor, on the other hand, uh, differently, they will sell you products, essentially, um, you know, good or bad, but they'll, they'll, they'll be able to sell it to you and, and directly, um, you know, tell you what investments to make, tell you where to invest your money and that sort and that aspect. So those are the two differences. So for a financial coach, it's really good for, for anyone who's perhaps wanting someone to walk with them while they get their money together. Perhaps they've got debt that they know they can pay off or they're not quite sure whether, um, you know, they, they've got money left over each month, they've got debt, they find themselves just not quite, just muddling, just wandering, I think, as we, you know, perhaps described it earlier, just aren't quite sure what to do with their money or where where, where they should be, how they should be budgeting. So, yeah, someone just walk with you, essentially, um, and can help you with the mindset, can help you get to grips with why you're spending um you know the amounts that you are and what you're you know if there's a particular area of budget you're struggling with can you have your tips tricks etc different coaches will specialize in different things there's some that have um have done a lot of a lot more training than i have for instance you know a lot done a lot and have a lot more uh, experience in uh, these sorts of things uh, and there's others that are uh, like me starting out have based a lot of personal experience and a lot of what i've read and, and done so go out there there's there's it's such a it's quite an, a, a small industry, but it's a growing one. There's, there's so many, yeah. there's a lot of people out there who, who, uh, who can help you. And there's some that are, you know, for instance, some that are psychologically trained as well. So we'll be able to give you, um, you know, counseling and that sort of thing as well to try and understand why you do what you do with your money. So yeah, coaches, that's essentially what they do. Um, I think they're, I'm speaking about bias, biasly. I do think they're a really good resource to have if you're, if you're just starting out, it, it can often feel a bit perverse, I think, to spend money to save money. And it's yeah. a concept I must admit that I've, to an extent struggle with in some areas of you know we we spend money on education perhaps and, and hope we get it back and the same thing here with coaching you spend money on a coach and you you should if it's a good coach you should be get, able to get that return back really quickly and yeah. you know save even more 100 percent, totally agree so what made you get into coaching what made you want to become a person I, I love spreadsheets money and talking to people about their money i it's a topic of conversation that 
always I'm happy to talk about. If someone brings it up in the pub, I'm happy to talk about, you know, my salary, my pension savings, my, uh, what, what I spend money on, my mortgage, my, <laughs> all these sorts of things. It's, it's, it's such a weird thing because most people are really, you know, closed and, ca- you know, closed yeah, off yeah. about these sorts of things. Talk to, that's how it is. But for me, love talking about this sort of thing. I like talking to other people. I like just helping guide people to achieve what they want to achieve because a lot of the time yeah. we, we are taught this stuff and we think it's strange when people want to talk to us and we, yeah, to just that's it's always been something I love talking about. I thought, why not start this Instagram account and help others that yeah. want advice but aren't sure where to turn? Because a lot of the time we don't have. There's nowhere to turn. You know, you have financial advisors, but most people, most people in the UK probably who are in debt aren't in a position to go and talk to them. We need yeah. to be able to build that bridge beforehand. And there's there's been a growing industry of money coaches that have started to 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 appear, and I think it's a really uh, useful and, and a resource that I think more people will start. To especially in like COVID. Yeah, 100%, totally agree. And then my last question, if you guys don't have any more, oh, sorry, we had a question from Chinstography. Chinstography. What's the name of the books? Oh, okay. Um, the books mentioned, gosh, you mentioned a few. So, so I meant, go on. Go on, you go. Oh, I didn't say, no, I mentioned Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey. I mentioned Your Money or Your Life by Vicky Robin. I mentioned The Richest Man in Babylon. I can't remember the author of that book, but it's a good book. And uh, yeah. gosh, I can't remember any more that we mentioned, but I do. Oh, go on. So I, so I mentioned The Millionaire Next Door. So that's yeah. a, a good one. That's by uh, Thomas Stanley and William Danko. And uh, Money, A User Guide. And that's by uh, Laura Waitley. Uh, that's a, a really, it looks like that, that one you'll know because it looks like uh, the front of a, a debit card. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, no, there's, there's so many different books. I've got a list yeah, um, no. on um, my page. So if you scroll down, you'll see a post where it has like my reading list for 2020. So I had uh, 12 finance books that I was reading this year. So one every single month. And so far, I'm still on track. So I'm in Amazing. November. Yeah, October's read. I'm currently reading. Um, oh, gosh. That's so bad. I'm actually reading the book and I can't remember the name <laughs> of the book. It's literally gone from my head. It's got a yellow cup. I can't remember the name of the book. But I'm re- Oh. Now, that's actually going to annoy me because I was reading the book yesterday and I can't remember the title of the book. But it's a really good book. If I remember, I'll tell you guys about it. But yeah. Uh, oh, that's it. You're not broke. You're pre-rich. That's it. Oh, gosh, it's ah, yeah. yeah. So that's the book I'm currently reading right now. So yeah, there's loads and loads and loads of them. Do a Google search and you'll find so many. Or you can look at the reading list on my page. I've actually done a few reviews on my blog as well. So if you go to my blog, you can see like book reviews for some of the finance books that I've read. But yeah, there's loads and loads of books out there. It's just a case of reading it and seeing what connects with you because obviously every author writes differently. Some of the stuff I might like, you might not like, etc. So it's just reading as much as you can and finding what works for you, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Okay, so my last question for you, if you guys don't have any more questions, is... Hold on. Three things that you would tell your younger self about money. So an 18 year old David, what would you say to him about money? I say, first off, uh, don't take out a credit card. You don't need it. Don't, don't bother with it. Second, I would say would be, uh, when you get your first property, use a mortgage broker. They're worth the weight in gold and will save you a lot of money. Uh, and, uh, thirdly, I would say, uh, have have fun with with money don't be don't be afraid to spend some i think we I, i'm really bad at this but i i focus a lot of my focus is on my goals and, and making my financial goals when actually and try to get there quicker even though i've got a set timeline so i think don't be scared to to have some fun with money spend it on things that you know within your means but spend it on things that you enjoy uh because that's at the end of the day you, you know everyone works hard for their money make sure to spend some as well yeah, that's that's fantastic advice, and I think that was really, really, really good advice. Actually, yeah, you have to enjoy your money too. Yes, it's important to budget and save and all the rest of it, but I'm not yeah. saying don't enjoy your life and not enjoy your money because, like you said, we work so hard for our money. The least we can do is enjoy some of it within reason, yeah. within moderation, and so long exactly. as you're doing it, then it's all good. And I think having a plan for your money and giving yourself that permission to spend it makes it so much more pleasurable. Like you enjoy it more when you feel yeah. like you've given yourself that permission and it's not money that you know you've taken from something more important kind of thing. So hundred percent. Totally agree. No, you've been amazing. Thank you so much for no, this conversation, David. You saved the comment saying how great you've been, really insightful, really enjoyable. I, so 
I, I, I've done, you know, I, I used to do these on, on my channel and I've done loads of lives. And I must admit, you've got such an engaged audience and like that like, so many people stuck around listen. So thank you. It's been, uh, yeah, thank you for having me on. It's been really, really fun. It's, the yeah. hour's absolutely flown by. So no, thank you, you really, so much. Really good. Are you going to bring it back actually? Conversations about money because they were really good. I really enjoyed them. They're in conversations. Yeah, I, I want to. It's, it's, it's part of a plan. I've, I've been, had a bit of a hiatus over the, the last sort of four weeks, so going on holiday. So hopefully, yeah, things are starting to ramp back up now in, term, in time for, for Christmas. And yeah, hoping to, to, to get some more uh, more guests on, talk to some more interesting people. And there's, yeah, there's a whole host of people now doing lives. So I think it's really great. I yeah, love I this don't... sort of thing to actually connect with people. That inspired me definitely to actually take the um, yeah, jump in my cities. Yeah, I was watching your lives and I was like, oh, these things are so amazing. It's so, so important. It's been so helpful to me. So I'm like, oh, let me try and do the same for my audience. And look, as you said, we've got such an engaged audience. So it's definitely yeah. helping people. So no, thank you. Thank you for being oh, a pleasure. Pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Um, How do you know what limit to set on spending money? Okay, you've got probably got about a minute or less to answer that question. <laughs> You don't know what the limit is. You set it based on how much you've got at the end of the, you know, you, you set it based on your budget. So do all your budget, work out what your other expenses are. Yeah, no, we've then, got like two seconds. I don't want you to get cut off, but no, thank you. You can fine. DM David and he can answer your question. But yeah, thank you so much, David. You've been amazing. It's been fantastic. Guys, check out his page, follow his page, subscribe to, uh, subscribe to his channel. He doesn't have a channel. But yeah, follow his page and book his coaching services because he's fantastic. Yeah. And if you need any more help, DM me and I can help you guys too. So yeah, see you guys next time.